Well, what is going on YouTube? Welcome back to a Therapeutic Edge. I hope everybody is having a great day. Hey, do me a favor. Please subscribe and uh, hit that like button. It's right down there somewhere. Uh, if you subscribe, I promise you lots of, well, just more videos, really. I hope you've enjoyed the ones you've watched so far. And if you're not a sub, go ahead and subscribe and you get to see more of what I do. And what I do is review knives. Uh, some are super budget friendly. Some are very expensive. Some are stuff that just interests me and stuff. Some are things that I think will interest you. Uh, in this case, it's a little of all of that. This is the TRM Shadow. This is a fantastic offering from the folks at uh, Three Rivers Manufacturing. Uh, it is a bar style lock, as you can see, which means that uh, it feels very similar to some Hoag's and some bench maids in the opening and closing. That is where some of the similarities end. It is G10, uh, it is CPM 20 CV, it has a lovely uh, titanium pocket clip, which is really, really nicely deep carry. This is, well, any way you look at it, this is a fantastic pocket knife. I didn't think I was ever gonna get one of these. So let's talk about the problem with Three Rivers Manufacturing TRM before we go any further. They are very popular, and because they're a small, all-American company, they tend to do things in small batch, which means getting a hold of one of their knives can be challenging. I get that. Now, I've had an Atom. Uh, it's a great knife, but it just wasn't that comfortable in my hand. Uh, Christine, Women Carry Knives, has both the Atom and the Neutron, Although I guess nowadays that's the old Tron because there's a new new Tron. Anyway, uh, she loves them both very, very much, and uh, rightfully so. They are exceptionally well-made knives. They're just not that comfortable in my hands. Now, when I saw the reviews for the Shadow here originally, I thought, you know, that looks a little thicker, a little taller, and I love this blade shape. And immediately sort of gave up because I didn't think I'd ever get one. And then Women Carry Knives, the amazing woman that she is, um, managed to get one for me for a belated birthday present, and here we are. And I'm in love. <laughs> Both with her and, of course, with this fantastic knife. Now, I mentioned that it's G10 and it's CPM 20 CV, but it's, it's more than that. This is a really well thought out knife, right? I can get four fingers on it behind the forward choil, which tells you a little bit about how big it is. And if I move forward onto that forward choil, I have just got a fantastic grip. This sort of modified drop point, almost clip point that they've put on this thing gives you lots of the way it's shaped, you get lots of belly. And because of the shape, you can actually get the knife fully down on the cutting board without banging the handle. So if you're cutting, you can chop with it. This way, of course, your knuckles are gonna get in the way a little bit, but not much. Now it's got a nice long flat here, but it's at an angle. So cutting with this knife is exceptionally good. And what have I cut? Well, you guys know the story. Same thing I've always cut, right? I've got some seat belt, and man, I'm gonna to have to go to a pick apart because I'm starting to run out of seat belt. Um, seat belt, uh, paracord, cardboard, you know, paper, uh, you name it, the stuff that I usually cut, I've sliced with this thing, and it is very, very slicing. <laughs> it really is. But then again, that's kind of the, the TRM thing. Their knives are really good at the one task that all knives should be good at, cutting. Let's take a look at some basic specs and then we'll do some size comparisons. And then I'm gonna compare this knife to two um, other access lock knives that I really like because I was asked. Uh, in fact, I think I'll do a third as well that is not a Benchmade, but also has a similar style lock, but we'll get to that in just a minute. So what do you get? Well, let's take a look. You get three and an eighth inches of cutting on three and a quarter inches of CPM 20 CV. The grip area, we'll do from behind the swell right there, is just at three and a half, but including that choil, 
one, two, three, four and a quarter inches overall. So there is tons of room to move around on this knife. Now they do their lock bar a little bit differently than some other companies. Uh, I've seen the disassembly on one of these and I will not be doing it because I, I don't want to get into it and there's no reason to. But for all intents and purposes, it works the same as every other lock bar, right? You grab hold, apply a little back pressure, it releases the lock and the blade swings shut. The action on this knife is superb when I don't screw it up because I'm on camera. <laughs> Whatever. It's got really nice thumb studs shaped in such a way that allows you to get your thumb underneath them and do a good flip. Or if you just want to roll it open, that's no problem as well. And of course you can pull back a little bit on the lock bar, loosen things up a little bit and just flip it out if you want to do that as well. The pivot on this absolutely deserves some attention. Let's see if we get that to show up really well. Oh. It's milled in this sort of sunburst pattern that is just gorgeous. And of course on this side, it's a high polish, right? All the hardware on this is really well done. It really is. Now there's a G10 backspacer and no spot for a lanyard, but you can flip the clip, which makes this a fully ambidextrous knife, which is a very nice feature. It's one of the joys of the lock bar style lock, the axis style lock, if you will is that if you can flip the clip, it's good for both righties and lefties. I'm talking to you, Kev. If you, if you guys aren't watching uh, Lefty EDC, you should. Little side note there. All right, the overall knife from end to end is what, seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, seven and three quarters. It's actually fairly compact, which is nice. It's not too big, it's not too small. The way it's built is really good. Now, because of the shape of the blade, it is a little wide in the pocket. So we're looking at an inch and a half from end to end, but there's nothing sharp, right? So it's in the pocket, right? This is the side that's out against the stuff in your pocket. And everything here is knocked down and beautiful. The G10 is milled out for comfort around the edges. And of course, it's got a great shape and it's got these milling lines in it that give it just a little texture, just a little grip. Nothing too aggressive, but more than enough to keep it in your hand, even if you were, with all due respect to Nick Shabazz, working in a Vaseline factory and had slippery hands. Blade stock is reasonably thin, which is great because it's long, which means it comes down to a very, very slicey edge, which explains the superb cutting that it does. Close profile on this guy. Excuse me, close length. I know what I'm talking about. One, two, three, four, a little over four and a half inches. Like I said, it's a very compact knife, but you get a lot of blade and a lot of handle to hang on to. Now, the stone wash is sort of prototypical, uh, or sort of typical uh, TRM stone wash. It means it's very even and very well done, but it is also sort of higher in that polish, right? It is a stone wash, but it's very reflective, and so it does pick up fingerprints very easily. Now, for those of you that use this as a straight working tool, that's not going to bother you at all. For those of us, me included, that use both knives as cutting tools and also as sort of showpieces, that can be sort of annoying. <laughs> Let's do some standard size comparisons for the channel. Here it is against the uh, full-size Presidio 2, and as you can see, the Presidio is just a much, much bigger knife, right? Also, lock bar. Here it is against the uh, RAT Model 1. Right, so as you can see, the Shadow is not a big knife. Here it is against the Mini Presidio 2, the Mini. Now, these two knives have uh, much more in common when it comes to overall size, but as you can see, the Shadow is just taller. Right? Not so much through this end, but just kind of everywhere else. And that is one of the reasons it is such a great handful of knife. But if you're thinking about, you know, where's it going to land size-wise, it's just an, maybe an eighth of an inch longer overall than the Mini Presidio 2, which means, of course, that it's about an eighth of an inch longer overall than the Bug Out. I don't happen to have a Bug Out on the table at the moment, but these knives are almost identical in length. So if you like the length of the Bug Out, you're really going to like the Shadow. 
Now let's compare it against some other axis style or lock bar locking knives. Uh, this was a request and it's a great idea. I was going to do it anyway, but here you go. Uh, first and foremost, we'll do it against just the absolute traditional. This of course is the, uh, yeah, Rift, one of my all time favorite bench maids. Right, as you can see, the Rift is a little bit bigger. Um, they have very similar grip in hand, which I think is just perfect. Uh, the Rift is one of the knives that I use, for me at least, to determine how comfortable other knives are. Because in my hand, the Rift is, it's just a perfect fit. Let's compare it against one more Benchmade. Let's move this up. Well, let's put it here, move this, put this above it. This, of course, is the uh, full-size Griptilian. Now, as you can see, our friend, the uh, Shadow here, is a little smaller than both of these knives. But because they gave up just a little cutting surface, right, and gave you that forward choil, you're actually at about the same grip area, right? So if you find the Rift, and if you haven't had one of those, you've very likely had a Griptilian, in your hand, comfortable, you will find the shadow comfortable. You do give up, as I said, a little bit of cutting area. So you give up about yeah, a little over a quarter inch of cutting, right? A um, little over a quarter inch of cutting, but not much, right? Uh, these knives are very similar overall in feel, but the materials... Now you can get a CPM 20 CV, Griptilian of course, but I'll tell you something about TRM. Both of these are favorites, okay? But the action right out of the box of the shadow here was better than either my Rift or the Griptilian. The build quality, just the space around the screws, the fitting of the plate back here, the way the pocket clip uh, is using inset screws so that it's perfectly deep carry. There's no blade rock, no wiggle. The lines, the space between the liners and the scales is non-existent. This is, well, just really spectacular American-made stuff going on right here. Which actually led me to another knife that I really like. This is the Schwartz Perpetua. And these are made by Millet, which is another American company. Another Barlock-style knife. Um, very, very similar and completely worth your time. The difference is uh, in the materials. You know, this is your basic G10, right? It's, it's, it's really well done, right? But it's a Nitro V blade and it weighs a ton. It's just thick. Millet did a great job, but the design itself lends itself out to very thick. And I replaced the pocket clip because the stop clip on the Perpetua was terrible. Also, the lock bar on this, the studs are almost inside. So you really got to grip it, right? The action's good. It's very good. This is better. Smoother, faster, lighter in hand. So I will say the following. If you can't find one of these and you want a knife that's going to perform similarly, you can get one of those. You can. These are $120. These are considerably more. But I'm not going to say you should just do that. I think if you want a TRM and you don't want an Atom and you don't want a Neutron and you don't want a Nerd and you don't want any of their other excellent but smaller knives, be patient. Don't be afraid to join their Facebook group and go after one of these because having had one, I can tell you that it is worth the wait. But if you don't want to wait, you want something a little classic, you can find a used one of the Rifts, or you can get yourself a Griptilian. You can even spend a little extra money and get yourself the Griptilian and CPM 20 CV. Or you can hunt around online and find yourself a Perpetua, all very similar in hand, all in a wide range of prices, right? So now you have choices, you have options. You really do. I am exceptionally happy to have the Shadow. Um, as I said, I wasn't 100% in love with the Atom. Again, not because it wasn't a superbly well-made knife, but just because it didn't 
fit my hand that well. This thing, this thing absolutely does. All right, let's go ahead and get the final bit of our specs and stuff out of the way. Let's weigh it. If you stuck around for, God, 15 minutes, sorry about that. Maybe you care and maybe you don't. Where are we on grams? All right, over on ounces, 3.7 ounces, right? For a three and a quarter inch blade. Not too bad, a little over that ounce per inch, but it's got all that hardware to make the axis lock work and that's just the way it's gonna be sometimes. Now I mentioned the thin slice of CPM 20 CV. Let's take a look at how thin. All right. Oh yeah, that is absolutely thin. 2.3 millimeters. The thing about CPM 20 CV is it's not gonna break anything because it's thin, but that just means that it comes down to an absolute slicey edge. Folks over at TRM are doing amazing things. They absolutely are. So there it is. The TRM Shadow, a fairly amazing pocket knife and one that I am very, very glad to have. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about this knife or any of my knives, feel free to ask down in the comments below. I will push, post a link, of course, in the description to the TRM website. Um, you can pay close attention. They do make drops of these periodically, and there's a full Thai version of this coming somewhere down the line that I would love to get my hands on. Maybe not to own, but to review. So if you get one and you'd like to share, let me know. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I have been a Therapeutic Edge. You have been amazing. We'll see you next time.